You have a lot of choices of what to do when coming to Denver, Colorado, but in this video, I'm gonna give you 11 meaningful local experiences that you should check out when in the Denver area that will really give you a sense of the area's history and culture and also its culinary and drink scene. So number one is Confluence Park. So Confluence Park is one of the several urban parks located in downtown Denver, and it's found at the confluence of the South Platte River and Cherry Creek. If you don't know, the South Platte River is one of the most important rivers to Denver, and the water here will eventually make its way all the way to the Mississippi River. But it was around the time of the summer of 1858 when early settlers were looking for gold in this area, ushering in the Colorado Gold Rush of 1859. There were a lot of rumors of these shimmering nuggets that attracted fortune seekers like moths to a flame, and soon early developments rose up around the park's grounds and along Cherry Creek's banks. Despite the Arapaho and Cheyenne people's cautionary tales of the treacherous flood-prone nature of these dry beds, the settlers went ahead and forged ahead, convinced that they could tame the forces of nature. But unfortunately for them, on May 19, 1864, Cherry Creek unleashed a catastrophic flood that completely overwhelmed the banks and engulfed the surrounding area. The consequences were really bad and lives were lost along with buildings including Denver's brand new city hall. Today your visit can be a lot less chaotic than what they experienced in the past and it's just a really cool place to kind of stroll around, maybe get some exercise or just chill out. There's a huge flagship REI store that's right by the park and it's worth checking out as well. If you're a fan of REI, you will probably be pretty amazed by it. I wouldn't exactly recommend getting in the water because of the horror stories of people coming into contact with just random discarded objects anywhere from your standard uh, aluminum cans to rogue syringes. Uh, I've also heard of people talking about getting E. coli, but nevertheless some people still do get in the water so it's up to you personally if you do get in maybe consider doing something like a kayak where you don't have to come in and you know completely uh, submerge yourself with the water and come into contact with it but either way i think confluence park is a great place to appreciate the history the formation of the city and just kind of enjoy this unique feature where you have a confluence of two rivers running through a downtown area which is something that you don't really see a lot of the second experience is the Denver Mint. So the Denver Mint holds a significant place in American history and it really is rooted in the era of the Colorado Gold Rush. So originally its primary function was to assess the purity of the gold and silver deposits that were brought in by the miners, but in 1906 the Denver Mint struck its first coins, marking the beginning of its role in coin production for circulation. Initially, it minted about $2.1 million worth of gold and silver coins in its first year of operation. But over the years, the Denver Mint has expanded its operation and capabilities, becoming a key player in the United States Mint system. Today, it focuses primarily on producing circulating coins, including pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. But it also creates uncirculated collector sets and commemorative coins. It's said that the Mint sits atop one of the largest deposits of gold in the country, although details on this really seem to be kept under wraps. But uh, regardless, I truly enjoyed learning about the different stages of the minting process on our visit. It was very educational. You won't actually be able to get up close and personal to the different machines and robots that are working in there producing the coins. But if you've ever done a factory tour before, you know how it is. You're kind of on the second level behind a glass wall, so you're able to observe and depending on the day, you may or may not be able to see them actually making fresh coins. On our day, they actually were making, I think they were making quarters. Um, so it was really cool to see that process. But either way, it's it can be very educational. You'll learn a lot about the different process. And you also get to come out with a free little blank planchet penny. So a nice little souvenir. One thing I love about this experience is that it is completely free. Although there are some really cool things to buy in the gift shop. The drawback is that the tickets are a bit weird unless they change things in the future, but they don't allow you to book tickets online, so you actually have to show up in person that morning to get a time slot, and those tickets can go by very quickly in the peak summertime or on peak holiday weekends, so make sure you plan ahead and get there early and expect to wait in line for a little bit. The next opportunity is the Four Mile House, which is the oldest standing structure in Denver. This was built back in 1859 by a pair of brothers and the house initially served as a stagecoach stop and trading post along the Smoky Hill and Cherokee Trail. 
it got its name because it was basically four miles from the city boundaries of Denver at that time. And these pioneers and these early settlers would come along trails like the Smoky Hill Trail, which was uh, a very notoriously dangerous trail where they would have to face, you know, surprise attacks from Native Americans. Obviously, they were traversing through their hunting lands and they also had to deal with illnesses or, you know, in the summer it would be scorching hot. And in the winter, you're talking about like bone chilling blizzards coming through Kansas. So you could imagine what it was like trying to get through that journey and then eventually you arrive to this nice little tavern where you could come in and enjoy a hot meal maybe get uh, a couple of drinks at the bar and then make your way up to the uh, second floor where they would be putting on uh, dances and playing music and things like that so it's really cool the thing is if you come here you want to try to make sure that there is a Dawson available so that you can get in and tour the actual house I thought it was extremely fascinating to see some of the well-preserved artifacts. I think they had some of the original wallpaper still up from one of the early days. And then you can kind of get the feel of what it would have been like to step into this tavern, you know, as a pioneer back in the day, at the time that uh, Denver was just coming into formation during the Pikes Peak Gold Rush. It just really took me back and I thought it was really cool. But beyond the house, there's also a lot of other things to do. Some of these are gonna be definitely geared more towards kids like they have um, they had like pigs and goats and you know horses and things like that I think you could pet some of them and some of them you couldn't but uh, that was that was pretty interesting but they also had another historic uh, one room schoolhouse there they had a recreation of a log cabin which is something you would have seen maybe like in the Rocky Mountains with the fur trappers and then they just had like a uh, throwback uh, blacksmith shop so uh, just kind of uh, an experience that can take you back to those pioneer days and the fact that this is the oldest surviving or oldest standing building in Denver makes it really interesting as well. I would definitely put this up on the list. Again, go in with the mindset of appreciating the history because for some people they may just think, oh, this is just, you know, a building. But uh, the guides are also really good and can give you a lot more detail and uh, facts about the history. So come with questions and come with the sense of curiosity. And I think you'll really appreciate this place that has a pretty low admission fee. Next on the list is the Buckhorn Exchange. This is the oldest restaurant in Denver established in 1893 by Henry Shorty Scout Zietz. So Zietz was known for his hunting skills and um, he had a friendship with Buffalo Bill and other notable figures, among them President Theodore Roosevelt. So he converted the Rio Grande Exchange into the Buckhorn Exchange back in the early 1900s. And this restaurant ever since has been a very famous place and it served a really diverse clientele, including miners, businessmen, and like I mentioned, uh, President Roosevelt, along with President Eisenhower, President Carter, Ronald Reagan. And so it's been a pretty popular spot. During Prohibition, this restaurant reportedly operated as a grocery and hid bootleg whiskey inside hollowed out loaves of pumpernickel bread. Today, the Buckhorn Exchange is designated as a historic landmark and whenever you go inside, you will be overwhelmed by a vast collection of taxidermy, antique memorabilia, and the historic bar upstairs, which I think has the first liquor license that was given out. Um, but it really feels almost as much as a, a museum as it is a restaurant. So it's just a unique place to go. I'm really not, I'm not a hunter. I'm not really like huge into taxidermy, but it was just really interesting to see the vast collection of all of these different animals from all over the world. and. It's just an overwhelming kind of different type of restaurant experience. People do have mixed opinions about the food here. So it is kind of polarizing. Personally, I went in and I had an elk steak with some kind of like peppercorn coating and it was fantastic. I, I loved it. I thought it was great. And, you know, if you're feeling a little ballsy, you know, I suggest trying to go with the Rocky Mountain oysters, which they're also known for. So again the opinions might be mixed on the food but regardless of the food i think that the restaurant is still worth visiting just because of the unique atmosphere and the history of it next is the cruise room so the cruise room is an iconic bar and lounge located in the oxford hotel in lower downtown denver and the oxford hotel i believe is also the oldest hotel in denver but uh, this bar is the longest operating bar in denver and it opened its doors back on December 5th, 1933, which was a pretty special day because it marked the day that the curtains were drawn on the era of prohibition, which of course was the nationwide ban on the production, sale, and distribution of alcohol. 
before it debuted to the public, it was a speakeasy and you can definitely get that feel as you walk into the place. You know, beyond its reputation as one of the region's oldest bars, the cruise room also draws people in because of its distinctive art deco design, which was crafted by Charles Jaca, I think is how you say it. So Jaca is also the creative mind behind the iconic observation bar on the RMS Queen Mary, which I think you can visit off the coast, uh, maybe outside of LA. But uh, his design for this bar was a tribute to the very essence of the Queen Mary. And actually, if you look uh, on the walls of the bar, you'll see the different ports that the Queen Mary stopped at, except for I think Germany and Italy were removed actually during World War II. So kind of interesting, but they serve up a lot of great drinks in uh, the bar. Um, the actual venue is actually shaped like a wine bottle. So pay attention to the ceiling and you will definitely get that shape. But um, the place is known for their martinis. If you're like me and you don't drink alcohol, they actually still do have some great mocktails. So I think it's still worth checking out for the history, for the architecture, and for the potential encounter with the postman ghost. Next is the Colorado State Capitol. So the Capitol in Denver is to me one of the best looking ones in the country. It was actually designed by architect Elijah E. Myers, who also designed the Texas State Capitol and the Michigan State Capitol. But um, you can actually come and visit and get a free tour. I think they're available Monday through Friday um, you can just kind of show up and maybe they have tours available right then or maybe you have to come back just kind of have to play it by ear a little bit but the tours are pretty nice you'll go through for about an hour and you'll get a lot of insight into Colorado's history as well as the history of the building and the building's really interesting because it has certain elements to it that make it a bit special they have this special rose onyx that's supposedly found nowhere else in the world and they have it in there where you can find these kind of like hidden shapes in it they have the same type of um, marble that was used in places like the Lincoln Memorial and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So um, really just beautiful kind of interesting stone that they used uh, that came from Colorado that really makes it stand out. There are these beautiful murals. And again, you can learn kind of the story of the history of Denver uh, as you check out these different design elements and as you hear from your tour guide. As you go through the building, you can explore the various chambers, including the House of Representatives and the former Colorado Supreme Court. They're really beautiful venues. And obviously, if you are visiting when something is in session, it may be a little bit different. But in our case, we were able to pretty much just freely roam through these rooms. And it was really cool. And the tour culminates with a climb to the observation deck. So um, it is kind of a tight stairway and there's no elevator. So if you have mobility issues, I think maybe there's like a, um, a video you can watch, but um, the first sort of level that you arrive at is uh, actually a museum that's located in the capital. And so it tells you more about the history of Denver and it's pretty small, but uh, pretty interesting. But then you actually climb up some steps into the observation tower. And from there, you have a great view of downtown, depending on how hazy it may be, you may be able to see the front range mountains. I think it's just a really, interesting experience to get up there some nice views kind of romantic and something that if you have you know the ability to to make it up there and you can get a tour i highly suggest doing it um so after the tour you can kind of wander around and explore anything you missed on the tour but you want to make sure that as you exit or as you enter that you check out the famous mile high steps and these are in the front of the building and you'll see several geological markers indicating exactly where the mile high um height is on those steps but um, the reason why you see multiple markers is because they've you know had advancements in measuring technology and so make sure that you find the latest one and uh, kind of stand there maybe get a photo op but overall I thought touring the state capitol was really cool we learned a, a good amount about the history I thought the, the guides were good and it's just a very beautiful um, capitol building I think one of my favorites in the country. The next location is Red Rocks Amphitheater. So this is a beautiful natural amphitheater that is nestled among some towering red sandstone formations. And it really does hold a cherished place in the hearts of music fans for the beauty, for the legendary acoustics, and for all of the iconic performances that have taken place here over the years, from the Beatles to U2 and Jimi Hendrix. It's a very, very long list of people. You can actually visit the 
um, Colorado Rock and Roll Hall of Fame there if you want to find out more about the performers, which I uh, would recommend you to check out. But the entire venue has a capacity of around 9,000. And it's just this unique open air experience. You're at an uh, elevation of around 6,450 feet. So, uh, it, it, you know, it feels nice up there. You do have to watch out for storms, especially in the summer that kind of blow in in the evening. A lot of times a concert will be delayed as they wait for these to rush in. And, you know, obviously they can bring in hail and it can be crazy. That's what happened. We actually saw 311 in concert and it was delayed as this storm blew in but then you know it blows out almost as quickly as it comes in and then you can get down there and you know the concerts back on and they put on music concerts they put on comedy shows sometimes they just play movies they were playing black panther when we were there so it's really cool to see an event if uh, you want to just visit during the morning or afternoon you can go in and uh, a lot of people they do workouts there they you know um, run bleachers or you can just kind of wander around and check it out because it's you know it's a visually stunning place there are trails that run all around so you can get in some hiking again some more great views but if you do want to come here for an event there are certain things you want to know about the parking and some other tips and i would highly highly suggest that you check out the article linked below which breaks all of that down for you but again do whatever you can if you visit red rocks or if you visit denver to make it out to red rocks ideally for an event but even if there's not one going on just check out the venue the next place to check out is Dinosaur Ridge, which is a famous geological site. It's actually located in Morrison, Colorado, but it's known for its rich concentration of dinosaur fossils and just the remarkable dinosaur trackways. So this site gained prominence back in the late 19th century during the Bone Wars period. If you've never heard of that, definitely look it up. Very interesting and entertaining. But many big time discoveries were made in this area, including those of the dinosaurs like Stegosaurus and Allosaurus. But at this ridge, you can easily explore a paved trail or walkway that takes you through the exposed layers of rock that contain dinosaur footprints, bones, and other fossils. It all gives you a great sense of the ancient environments in which the dinosaurs once roamed in this area and it really just blows your mind to think how different the terrain would have been way back in those times. And if you really like Dinosaur Ridge, I would suggest that you also check out the um, Triceratops Trail. It's over there. It's a really short trail. It's relatively close to Dinosaur Ridge and over there you can check out some T-Rex tracks. There's some other fossils and it's really accessible, really cool to check out. So for dinosaur lovers, there's a lot to do and see in the Denver area that will probably blow your mind. Next is to go to a sports venue. So Denver is home to several different sports teams from the Denver Nuggets, the Denver Broncos, the Colorado Rockies, and the Colorado Avalanche and some of these teams have had a lot of great recent success especially the Avalanche and the Nuggets you know there's a, there's always going to be some good sports to watch there I think Mile High Field is a really interesting football stadium um, Coors Field is also a great venue to go check out with some really nice views so I would try to get out to at least one of these venues especially some of the ones with uh, you know the outdoor views like Coors or Miles High Field just because they're really interesting venues and I think it's worth checking out. The next thing to do is to go on a hike. So lots of people think hiking when they think of Denver, but the truth is the city's actually not that close to a lot of the hiking. So if you're talking about the suburban towns of Boulder, Golden, and Morrison, those are all located fairly close to some of the great hikes. But uh, if you're staying in Denver proper, especially if you're kind of on the east side, it's actually a decent drive to get over to those um, great hikes, especially, you know, the 13ers and 14ers. With that said, I think one great place to do some hiking that's fairly close is Roxborough State Park. I really enjoyed the hike up to Carpenter Peak, which was, I thought, a pretty nice moderate hike with some decent views. And it doesn't require you to venture too far into the front range. But if you are a beginner and you want to try out a 14er, I would recommend trying out Gray's Peak, which is a perfect first 14er. Just keep in mind that even the easy 14ers are actually not that easy, especially if you're not properly acclimated or you don't have any hiking experience so take it slow and again just remember if you want to go hiking you may have to do a little bit more driving than you would think coming to denver the final site i recommend you stopping by is the columbine memorial so the columbine memorial honors and remembers the victims of the school shooting that occurred at columbine high school on april 20th 1999 the memorial was officially dedicated back in 2007 and today it serves as a place of reflection and healing and remembrance 
for all those who were affected by the event. So, you know, the unfortunate reality of today's world is that school shootings are so common that they don't just quite shock us like they once did. But Columbine was the, uh, while it was not the first school shooting, it was the first shooting that I remember really shocking the world. And so going to this memorial, which is, you know, very close to the high school where it took place, really just puts these events into a fresh perspective. And it's very moving to read the messages along the walls from all of the people in the community who were affected and especially from the parents who lost their children. And I just recommend stopping by here to put all of the chaos when it comes to school shootings into kind of its proper perspective. There's something about this memorial that really just moved me. And so um, now I sort of think a little bit differently about these events. So those are 11 meaningful local experiences to uh, appreciate whenever you go to Denver. I think it's a good mixture of different types of experiences that bring out different elements of the history and the culture of Denver. And if you are able to get out to some of these or you already have visited them, let me know in the comments below how you felt about them. What did you appreciate? What did you not like? And otherwise, just don't forget to like and subscribe.